In this video, we will go over a problem from the 2014 AP Chemistry exam. So this question says, a student is given the task of determining the I- content of tablets that contain potassium iodide and an inert water-soluble sugar as a filler. A tablet is dissolved in 50 milliliters of water and an excess of 0.2 molar lead to nitrate is added to the solution. A yellow precipitate forms, which is then filtered, washed, and dried. The data from the experiment are shown in the table above. Part A says to write a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction. So to write this net ionic equation, we're first going to write the complete chemical equation. And to do that, uh, we're going to need the reactants, which are potassium iodide and lead to nitrate, and the products, which are potassium nitrate and lead iodide. First, we're going to have the unbalanced equation. So we have potassium iodide and lead to nitrate are going to make potassium nitrate and uh, lead to iodide. To balance it, we want two iodides on both sides. So we're going to multiply the potassium iodide on the left by two. And because that means we need now need two potassiums, we're going to multiply uh, the KNO3 by two. So we have uh, two Ki plus uh, lead to nitrate. Uh, becomes 2KNO3 plus uh, PBI2. So now we're going to break each of these uh, compounds down into their ions. So uh, the potassium iodide becomes a potassium ion and an iodide ion. The lead 2 nitrate will become one lead cation and two nitrate anions. And then for the products, uh, Potassium nitrate becomes a potassium ion and a nitrate ion. And the lead to iodide is solid precipitate because uh, according to our solubility rules, lead halide salts cannot dissolve in water, while uh, nitrate salts uh, almost always dissolve in water. So now the next step to get the net ionic equation is going to be to remove the spectator ions, the ions that, remove, that appear on both sides of the equation. So those are the potassium ion and the nitrate ions. So we are going to get rid of those and end up with 2I minus plus a PB2 plus becomes a PBI2 solid. So the reason why this reaction is best represented by an ionic equation is because the spectator ions don't actually do anything in the reaction. Uh, they are just in the water and they help bring the precipitate ions together into that solid. And at the end of this reaction, uh, they're still going to remain as free ions in the water as an aqueous solution. And then part B says, explain the purpose of drying and weighing the filter paper with precipitate three times. So if you look at this description, they had to uh, dry the filter paper and precipitate. And each time they dried it, the mass decreased by a little bit. And in the paragraph below, it also says that the precipitate was filtered and washed. Obviously, because this whole thing is wet, there's going to be some water making up that mass. And to get an accurate value for the mass of only the precipitate, you got to remove all that water. And that can be accomplished by simply evaporating all the water by drying it many times. Then part C says, in the filtrate solution is the concentration of potassium greater than, less than, or equal than the concentration of nitrate ions. Justify your answer. So this description says that lead to nitrate was added to the solution in excess. This means that while the iodide and the potassium are used up, there's still going to be extra lead and nitrate ions left. So the concentration of nitrate is going to be greater than the concentration of potassium. And then part D says calculate the number of moles of precipitate that is produced in the experiment. So we have the mass of the paper and the precipitate minus the mass of the paper uh, to get the precipitate. But what is the mass of the paper? Well, we can see that when it was thoroughly dried, it was 1.462 grams. The mass of the paper and the precipitate is going to be the mass after the third drying because that is when we ensure that there isn't any water making up that mass. So we're going to have 1.698 minus 1.462 
as equal to 0 0.236 grams of the precipitate, which is lead to iodide. The molar mass of lead to iodide is the mass of lead, which is 207.2 grams per mole, plus the two iodide ions, which are each uh, 126.9 grams per mole. And you can get these numbers from a periodic table. This becomes 4.61 grams per mole. Now we have to divide the mass of the lead to iodide divided by the molar mass to get the number of moles. If you use your calculator dividing those two numbers, you should get 5.12 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of lead to iodide. Now part E says calculate the mass percent of iodide in the tablet. So because the number of moles of iodide ions is the same before and after the reaction, since all of the iodide is going to be precipitated, we can just look at the moles of iodide ions that are present in the precipitate, and that's going to be the exact same as the number of moles in the tablet. So the mass of the tablet is 0 0.425 grams. Oh, we're going to need to remember that. The moles of iodide is equal to double the moles of lead to iodide because there are two iodide ions for each molecule of lead to iodide. We are going to multiply the number of moles of lead to iodide by 2 to get 1.02 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of iodide ions. Each ion is going to have a mass of 126.9 grams per mole. We can find that from the periodic table and we just multiply that by the number of moles to get 0 0.13 grams of I minus in the tablet. So the mass of the tablet, as we said earlier, was 0 0.425 grams. So if we divide the mass of iodide by the mass of the whole tablet, we get 0 0.306, which is 30.6%. Part F says, in another trial, the student dissolves a tablet in 55 milliliters of water instead of 50 milliliters of water. Predict whether the experimentally determined mass percent of iodide will be greater than, less than, or equal to the amount calculated in Part E. Justify your answer. So because we said that lead is added in excess, all the iodide ions are still going to be used up and the water will evaporate away. So this means that the mass percent of iodide is still going to be the same, assuming that the tablet was identical to the one in the first trial, because the number of iodide ions is still going to be the same. G says, a student in another lab wants to determine the I- minus content of a Ki tablet, but does not have access to lead to nitrate. However, he does have access to silver nitrate, which reacts with iodide to produce silver iodide. The value for Ksp of silver iodide is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 17. G part 1 is asking if this substitution will still result in the precipitation of the iodide ion. Most likely it will because the value of Ksp for silver iodide is really low and as long as the reaction quotient is uh, greater than Ksp, the precipitate is still going to form. Two says the student only has access to one Ki tablet and a balance that can measure to the nearest 0.01 grams. Will the student be able to determine the mass of silver iodide produced to three significant figures? It says here that the display will only show to the nearest 0.01 gram. Because the precipitate's mass that we calculated earlier is less than 1 gram, you can have no more than two significant figures. Because if you want three significant figures, the precipitate's mass will need to be more than 1 gram. So no, you cannot determine the mass to three significant figures. Thank you for watching this video, and please like and subscribe for more content related to AP Chemistry.